the Rafu Shlema and Pinchas Nechemia Ben Rachel, Pesach Sharchal Yisrael. All right, so this is Parsha. We, uh, you know, we come home a little bit. It's a little bit more familiar territory. It's Mishpacha, Avram Avinu. So the Pasuk tells us that Hashem tells Avram Avinu, Yomar Hashem al Avram. Hashem says to Avram, Lech Lecha Me'artzacha, right? Go from your, from your land, your father's home, to the land that I will show you. And Hashem promises Avram Avinu that despite the fact that you'll be traveling a lot, I'll make you into a great nation, I'll bless you, I'll make your name great, and you will be a source of blessing. Four things. So Rashi over there goes to each one to define what exactly it means. What does it mean a great nation? What does it mean I'll bless you? So one of the pshat in the Rashi says is very famous. Rashi brings down from Chazal Davracher a certain interpretation that the Eschel Gadol means, I'll make you into a great nation, means that's what we say in the first Baruch Hashem Esrei. We describe Hashem as Elokei Avram, the God of Avram. Ba'avarech, I will bless you, that means we say Elokei Yitzchak. Ba'gad l'shemech, I'll make your name great, that's what we say Elokei Yaakov. So it says Rashi, so you might think that we end off the bracha, Baruch Atah Hashem, Hogin, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov. So the bracha, you will be the source of blessing. In other words, we end off only Mogin Avram. Okay, that's that's Rashi. We're familiar with that. I mean, here's the problem. If you just, you know, again, this is a, like, midrashic interpretation of the Pasuk, right? The simple reading of the Pasuk is that every single one of those um, promises that Hashem made are blessings and, and, and you know, good things that Hashem is promising to Avram as, as an individual, Avram Avinu. I will make your name great, I will bless you, and so on and so forth. So the question is, I understand Eloke Avram, that's something great about Avram Avinu, that Hashem is called the God of Avram. But Eloke Yitzchak, Eloke Yaakov, that's something great about Yitzchak and Yaakov, that's not great about Avram. Oh, okay, so what you'll tell me, Can it's Nachas, right, it's Nachas it's, for the father it's, that, you know, no, the son, the grandson, that are carrying and the that's right. But here's the problem, though. Clearly, it's not 100%, you know, Avram Avinu's account, because then otherwise, what's the promise? But don't worry, the end of the brach will be just you. In other words, if, if it's if it's 100% uh, a blessing to Avram Avinu in knowing that his son and grandchildren and grandson will carry along the path, then end off the bracha, baruch atah Hashem, magin Avram Yitzchak Yaakov. That's even that's even greater. The fact that Hashem is already worried, but don't don't I know this takes away from you, and so I promise the end of the bracha will be will be you. It means that by saying Elokei Yitzchak Yaakov, it's taking away from Avram Avinu. And so how does that fit then with the simple pshat, which is I will make your name great, I will bless you. It's all about Avram Avinu. So how do we make sense of this? Is by is us saying okay, it's like okay, Yaakov, you know, propelling Avram Avinu? Is that taking away from Avram Avinu? How do we make sense of it? All right, so it's like this. You know, we say twice a day Kriyashma, right? So in the in the parsha of Shema, there's a line that sort of sums up what all of this Hashem is, and all the different ways that we that we serve Hashem, and that is Ula Avdai, Bekol Avcham. We serve Hashem with all of our hearts, right? <laughs> what does it mean, Ulav de Vakolavavchem? That sums up all of Yiddishkeit, that we have to serve Hashem with all of our hearts. What does that mean? So there's a Medrash. The Medrash, you know, the, the, the opening line of the Medrash is, is somewhat famous. The end of it is not as much. The Medrash asks, What does it mean to serve God with your heart? What does that mean, Avodh Hashem with the heart? So the Medrash says, Zutfi, let's daven. Now the Medrash continues though, Davracher, the second interpretation, that what does it mean serving Hashem with your heart? It means learning, that Talmud, learning. In other words, what the Medrash is telling us is that if you had to sum up all of Yiddishkeit, you know, boiling it down to its most basic tenets, most basic obligations, what is it we do to serve God? Basically it boils down to two things, davening and learning. Davening and learning. The fact that we keep mitzvahs, that's really an extension of our learning in a certain sense, right? If you didn't do what you, if you didn't practice what you preach, it kind of takes away from the learning. So it all sums up with davening and learning. Davening and learning, which is Avodah Hashem in general, are related to two of the Avos. That would be Yitzchak and Yaakov. Yitzchak, we know, was the first carbon. He was a human sacrifice. He was a carbon himself. Carbonus are always we know are reflective of davening. Davening is in place of carbonus. So Yitzchak therefore represents davening. Who represents Torah learning? It's yeah. Yaakov Avinu, right? Yaakov Avinu is described as Ishtam Yoshev Olam, the one that sits in the base Medrash. Yaakov Avinu is Torah. Yaakov learned in the Yeshiva Shem Vever all those years and so on. So Yitzchak means davening, 
And Yaakov means learning. That's why this is Hashem. What's Avram Avinu's role? Well, it's like this. In order to dive in, in order to learn, you need one basic fundamental point, one basic uh, foundation upon which davening and learning can exist, which is faith, emunah, right? If you don't believe in God, then you can't begin to daven, and you can't begin to learn. You know, have emunah. That's Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu is called by Chazal Rai Shlom Amin, in the beginning of faith. Avram Avinu taught the world and teaches each and every one of us that there is a God in heaven. And now once you have that fact, you believe in God, okay, now you serve Him. So that's Avram Avinu. Avram is the beginning. He's the foundation. That's a moon. That's faith. Once you have Avram Avinu, okay, now you can have a Yitzchak, davening, and Yitzchak, you can have learning. Now, <clears throat> if you think of it like that, then Amuna is seen as just the beginning. It's the olive base. It's basic. It's basic. You go to yeshiva. It's like the first thing they teach you is that there's a God. That's it. And now, okay, but that's already it's already done. Now let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. There's davening, learning, you become more sophisticated. Amun is the basic, that's Avram Avinu, that's the foundation. You need a foundation, without Amun the whole thing doesn't start, but it's just the foundation. But Yitzchak and Yaakov, that's the Iker, right? But the truth is, not only is that incorrect, that's, it's even dangerous. It's not much even dangerous. The truth is, the Pasuk says, Tzadik be'amunaso yechia. Tzadik be'amunaso yechia, the Tzadik lives with his faith. What does that mean? Amuna faith is not something that is like the Aleph Bay is something basic and you sort of you move past that when you you know when you become a little bit of an adult. The truth is, and I'll I'll spend a few minutes to explain what I mean by this, but the Tzadikim have taught us as far as say that the truth is all of our davening and learning is only there to enhance and to express and to develop our amuna. The tachlis of everything, of all of our avaida is to strengthen and to deepen and to bring out and to express the amuna that Avram Avinu establishes. Amuna is something which is the foundation, it's the beginning of Avaida, and in truth, it's also the tachlis, it's also the goal of our Avaida. Saif Maisa, we say in Lechadaydi, right? How does that work practically? That's what I'll explain. Saif Maisa, Machshav Etchila, right? We know that the, what we say in Lechadaydi, the end is the first thing that Hashem thought about. The beginning and end are always interconnected with each other. Avodah Hashem starts with the Muna and it ends with the Muna. Now, what do I mean? What do I mean? So let's ask an, a, a bigger question: What is a Muna? Now, this is a, a broad question, and the truth is, it's, I have a lot of time to explain this. But what is a Muna? Okay, what is a Muna? A guy, a guy is in a situation where nothing makes sense. Life is topsy turvy, and someone asks him, "So, like, why are you daven?" He says, "I don't know. I just believe. I believe in God. Like, why? I don't know. I just do." Like, what is that? Is that just like childish? brainwashing, like, like, what is that? So the truth is like this. There are two parts to who we are, okay? This is a very, very important principle. There's two parts to who we are. There's a part of us which is here right now, looking at each other, looking at the food, looking at me, listening, breathing in the air, sitting on a chair, holding onto a table. That part of us that's down here, its universe, its experience, its environment is this room right now. That's it, pretty simple. But there's another part of who we are. There's a much deeper part of who we are. There's a part of who we are whose universe, whose experience, whose environment is God himself. God himself. There's a part of the Jewish soul which is so much bigger than just our bodies. You know, the, the, the part of the neshama that's inside of us is the, the tip of the iceberg. The vast majority of who we are is living in a different universe altogether. Now here's the problem. That universe that that bigger part of who we are lives in. That's a universe that all it sees is God. All it knows is God. All it cares about is God. The problem is that it, that part of who we are tries to tell us, tries to communicate to us, and to tell us what it sees. But the problem is, it's such a different universe than what our eyes see, it lacks the words. It lacks the words. So if you have someone who's given the gift of sight, and that person tries to explain what color is to someone who unfortunately is not given that gift, what are you supposed to do? It's just, it, the language isn't there. So what happens when you have a big idea, a big thought, a big emotion, and you try to convey it, you try to express it, and you don't find the words? How does it come out? Jumbled and strange and confused, right? Let's say, you know, you have a kid or something, 
and you love your kid a lot, and the kid did something very, very cute or something, so like, you try to find the words to express all of your emotion to your kid, and what comes out, uh, you're such a little, little cute sheep, I don't know, whatever, so, something silly. Davka, Davka, big things, because we find it hard to convey such big things, it comes out in an infantile way sometimes, right? A guy will be able to write poetry about the sunset, but he'll have a hard time finding the right words to talk about his wife or his kids. Because it's so much bigger and it's hard to convey. <coughs> What's happening when a Jew is confronted with a, with a situation that doesn't, you know, life is confusing and the Jew says, I just believe. I, I can't explain. I just, I just believe in God. You know, what the, you know what's happening there? What's happening there is that the deeper part of who you are knows and sees and feels and, know, and just it li- it lives living with God. And when it tries to convey its experience to us and its environment to us, the way it comes out is like, I, I can't explain, I just do. I just believe. That's what Amuna is. Amuna is not some, some brainwashing technique that our parents used on us, you know what I mean, or the system used on us to convince us, you know, to go through this life. Amuna, Amuna is the deeper part of who you are trying to explain its environment. And because it it has a hard time doing that, we receive that as just, I believe, I can't explain why. All of Avadis Hashem, all of Davin and learning, are to try as best as possible, even then it's limited. All of Yiddishkeit, all the mitzvahs that we do, the davening and all the learning that we do, is trying to give a voice and to give it the best words it can. Even with all the mitzvahs, it still has a hard time finding the right words to convey, to express to who we are down here about what re- what reality really is. But that's what mitzvahs, every mitzvah that we do, every 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 shir you listen to, every pasuk chumash you read, every davening that you, that you, that you offer up, those are, it's, it's all for one purpose. It's all for trying to give that deeper part of who you are a way of expressing itself. And, and, this, and therefore, all of Avadis Hashem, Yitzchak and Yaakov, it's all to express Avram Avinu. It's all to give Avram Avinu a better, stronger, more clear voice. That's what it is. So a Jew starts before you begin the program of Yiddishkeit. You begin with I don't know, this is just something I believe. And you go through Avadis Hashem, David, you're learning, Elokei Yitzchak, Elokei Yaakov, all for one singular purpose, to enhance that voice and to make it more real that when you then say, I believe, it, it has more potency to it. This is what we're saying in David. We start off, Hashem is Elokei Avram. That's basic faith. And then we say, okay, now that I have basic faith, Elokei Yitzchak, I'm able to David, Elokei Yaakov, I'm able to learn. But why am I davening and why am I learning? What is the purpose of it? What is it trying to accomplish? The answer is Magain Avram. It's trying to just give a voice to Avram Avinu. That when you say Ani Mamin, it means more when, you, when you're davening and learning, giving fuel to that fire. And that, that's, that's what all the Yiddishkeit is. It's just giving a voice to that deeper part of who we are, allowing it to express itself as much as, much as it possibly can. That's what Yiddishkeit is. And this is going back to the question I started with. So is by saying, Elokei Yitzchak and Yaakov, is that praising Avram? The answer is, yeah, because by saying what, what Yitzchak and Yaakov are, they are just tools and mechanisms by which Avram Avinu expresses himself. It's all about Avram Avinu. And that's where we end off, Magen Avram. It's all Amunu. It's all Amunu. All of Yiddishkeit is about, is about giving a voice to that Amunu. The Baal Shanta said that after 120... When Sadiqan get up there, of course everyone is judged on their learning and davening all the mitzvahs that, that they do. But really, the Baal Shanta said, if you want to know the hierarchy, which Sadiq is up there and which Sadiq is a little bit lower, it's all on Amuna. How much faith did they live with? How much of a voice did they give their Amuna? What did it mean when they said, I believe? How deeply did that, did that resonate with them? That's what Yiddishkeit is about. And that every time you daven, every time you do a mitzvah, it's all for that purpose of mugging Avram, giving, giving a voice to Avram Avinu, enhancing that Amun. And a person can daven for this as well. A person can daven to Hashem that Hashem should give us the power of expressing our Amun. You know, there's, a, there's a story they say that uh, there was a particular chassid that, I don't, remember, I don't remember which tzaddik it was, a particular chassid after davening, he came over to, the, to his rebbe and he said, you know, every day, I, I have a thing that after davening, I say the animamans, right? I believe this, animam, I believe with perfect faith, uh, in all that stuff. So, and 
the Chassid said, it just, it just dawned upon me this morning that, like, I don't know, maybe I don't really believe. Like, how much do I believe it already? Like, like really, you know? So I don't know what to do. So am I, am I, am I just making a baloney? <coughs> Should I continue saying that, Imam? It's like, so the Rebbe said to him, the truth is, I have that same concern, too. And I was concerned about this a while back, he said. So, okay, so what does Rebbe do? So the Rebbe said, I say the Animamins as a prayer. Animamun Shleim, I say to Hashem, Hashem, let me be able to say properly that I believe with perfect faith in you and in your Torah and in my Shervenu as a tefillah. Because we, a Jew, as, as, because we come from Avram Avinu, because we're born from his, from his genetics, whether we're biologically connected to him, through conversion we're connected to him. However way, if we're coming from Avram Avinu, it means that we have a moon inside of us. It means that there is this deeper part of us that knows that its, its entire universe is God. And that's what our Avayda is, just to give that a way of expressing itself. And the tools that Hashem gave us are the 613 mitzvahs. And the Zohar, like I mentioned this to, to someone the other night, that the Zohar Kaddish, when it talks about mitzvahs, it doesn't talk about them as 613 commandments. The way the Zohar describes mitzvahs is that these are 613 doorways, and 613 passageways, and entranceways into something deeper. Into something deeper and to allow something deeper to come out. That's what mitzvahs are. That's what mitzvahs are. When a person you know, puts on tefillin, shakes a little of an asterisk, just thinking, okay, this is just something that I'm doing. Of course it's gewaldic, but it's, you're missing the potency. When you do a mitzvah, you have to think for yourself, if, if daven, a little bit even to daven, that this mitzvah should have the strength to give my soul an ability to express itself better. And when a person does, when a person serves Hashem like that, then slowly but surely, you'll find yourself <coughs> having more amuna. You'll find yourself being able to to talk to Hashem better and to have strength, more spiritual energy when it comes to dealing with tests and difficulties. The mitzvahs are there for a reason. You know, Hashem gave us these are the tools. Okay, Yitzchak, okay, Yaakov, Davin, you're learning the mitzvahs, but it's all for the purpose of Magen Avram. So, so Hashem should help that we should be zaycha to strengthen our amuna. We have to believe not only in God, we have to believe that we have amuna. That's something we also have to do. And we have to believe that the tools that Hashem gave us work. A person has to believe in mitzvahs. You have to believe in the power of mitzvahs. And when you do a mitzvah, you have to give yourself over to the mitzvah. You have to give yourself over with mysterious nefesh. When a person does that, then Avram Avinu begins to talk. When Avram Avinu begins to move, he begins to shake, and he begins to change and evolve, and, and you become a bigger person. So Hashem should have, we should become, we should become by the Hashem like that. And every time we say, okay, Avram, okay, Yisrael, okay, Yaakov, so Hashem should, uh, Fulfill that. Fulfill that within us. Amen. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you.